Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. In many videos I've talked about one day hopefully getting a big barn somewhere or a big garage somewhere and then filling it full of cars from the late 90s and early 2000s. That's my real dream. I suppose really it'd be a bit of a low rent, low budget Harry's garage. Somewhere between his and maybe Hoovy's, something like that. Today I thought I'd run you through the list of cars which would feature in my imaginary barn. Warning though, some of these are, well some are tat. Some are genuinely desirable but some are tat. Right, on to Australia then. I think my first stop then is at BMW. Now, I love late 90s, early 2000s BMW, so... This is where I'd go first. What should we look at? Straight away I'm thinking E38 7 Series and then E39 5 Series. I just love those two. Let's have a look, see what we can find. So 7 Series up to... Oh, that looks good. 728s and 150,000 miles. It's probably not the one to keep, that is it, but it does look good value. It's 2795. This is the sort of era that I want. UK Cellnet. It's got a phone, sat nav. That looks really good value, actually. I really like them in silver. I just think it's a really clean looking, really clean looking design. Really, though, what I'd want is a 740. So something like that. It's a 4.4 litre V8. That's the long wheelbase version as well. And I think that's either Beeritz blue or, yeah, I think it's Beeritz. Look at that. So definitely a 7 Series. That would probably take pride of place, actually. Let's have a look at E39s then. So the E39 was the 5 Series from 1996 until 2003, I think. 2002, 3? It's getting quite difficult to find a nice one of these because they often rotted over the front wheel arches there. So, that one looks original, doesn't it? W Reg done 65,000 miles. I think personally though, I'd want a, uh, want a nicer example. I'd probably want a facelift car actually. Something like that, look at that. So that is a 525 six cylinder straight six. It's got the angel eye lights. That is Oxford green. Over a tan interior, that's beautiful actually. 5995, so they are already on the uh, on the rise, these prices, aren't they? So I would definitely have an E38 and an E39. What else from BMW? Definitely 100% an X5, an early E53. Again, to be honest, I think mm, probably silver. I just like that. Sounds boring, really, but I, I like the... I think a colour sometimes is a bit of a distraction. I just like the clean design. I also quite like this pale green colour, which I don't exactly know the, the exact colour code. That one's a 4.4 V8. I don't like how someone's put a V8 badge there. Looks a bit, a bit Halfords, isn't it, that? But I really like that colour. I always have done. I don't like those lights either. That is AliExpress. See, that's seven grand, so they're already creeping up in value. Looks like a nice clean example of that, really. And I love that steering wheel. So I need seven grand for that. Okay, right, we're already up to about 15 grand then, aren't we? Before we look at any more, I've just got to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark are a VPN service provider, but they're also a long-time supporter of the channel. So by checking them out, you're helping support the channel. If you want to protect yourself while you're shopping online or doing online banking, you definitely need to check them out. It protects you so that all your data and your details are safe, including your IP address, so cyber thieves can't view it. In addition to that, it blocks malware, phishing, ads, and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can speed up your bandwidth and make your device run much more quickly. The last thing I want to happen is to have my credit card details stolen or my bank account hacked into, and since I've been using Surfshark, touch wood, that hasn't happened. There's another handy feature with Surfshark. You can actually use it to change your location settings. You know, for example, if you're on a streaming site such as Netflix and it won't let you watch your favorite TV show or film, you can use Surfshark to change your location settings so that it thinks you're in a different territory or region, then all of a sudden you can watch those TV shows and films. It's really handy. I use this mainly when I'm in Spain so that it thinks I'm still here in the UK. You can download the app very easily from the App Store and you can use it on multiple devices. It's cheap and easy to use. We're all online a huge amount of time these days and you just don't know how much information you're putting out there, so it's better to protect yourself. Especially if you frequently use public Wi-Fi spots such as at train stations, airports, that sort of thing. If you're interested in checking them out, I'll leave the link below, but you'll get a better deal if you use my promo code HYPECAUTOS. You'll get three months extra, totally free. All you need to do is visit surfshark.deals forward slash Right, back to the cars. 
Now, this is probably a bit unpopular, but I would have a Z3. Now, that one's for sale at Southern Cars. Nice colour. Personally, though, and this is my dream garage, so I can have whatever I want, I would want a, a six-cylinder, so either a 2.8 or a 3.0-litre. I wouldn't want one of the 1.9s, really. I think the 3.0-litres have a limited slip diff as well. So I'd try and hunt down... Oh, look at that one. I think that's Topaz Blue. Oh, it's a 1.9, that's no good. For years, they've kind of looked a bit naff, I think, the Z3, but now they're really having the time. It would have to be either Topaz Blue, I think, or that colour blue, I don't know the exact colour code, but it's from the the GoldenEye film. But yeah, it'd have to be a six cylinder. So either a 2.8 or a three litre. I'd also have an E46 330. Now I bought one of these a few years ago, or well, last year actually I think it was, an Oxford Green 330. So I'd probably, the trouble is right now, I just don't, don't have anywhere to keep them. But in this TARDIS barn that I've got, there would be plenty of room. So there would be a 330 E46 convertible. Also, I would try and make space for, now this is going to blow the budget, a Z8. I've always loved the Z8. You get the 5 litre V8 engine from an E39 M5 under the, the prettiest, prettiest body you'll ever see. It was kind of a retro version of the old 507 BMW. I just think they're gorgeous. Look how pretty that interior is. Now, bear in mind that silver with the red interior, which is a bit like my old SL55. Look at that. I just love, I think they've nailed that design. The steering wheel, the gear stick, the, the minimalist dash. I just think it's perfect. But, oh, 190,000 pounds. So, that then, I think concludes all my BMWs. I'd also, I'd probably try and get a, uh, an E46 M3 coupe manual, and also an E39 M5, but I wouldn't be too bothered if those weren't included. I haven't exactly done this in alphabetical order, but next up is Audi. Now from this sort of era, this is, this is mid-2000s, I would want either an S6 Avant or an S6 Saloon. So the S6 Saloon, oh, I'd want it in that colour blue as well. Seven and a half grand and you get a 5.2 litre Lamborghini V10. What I really like about those cars is just how, how kind of plain they look. I don't really like this expression, but it is a complete sleeper, a Q car. It just looks like a boring Audi saloon car. Nobody knows it's got a 5.2 litre engine under the bonnet. Seven and a half grand, that's so tempting. Yeah, it would have to be in that blue color. I love that. Or possibly the Avant. That'd make a great tip run car, wouldn't it, that? Take your dogs for a walk with your V10. So that's definitely on the list. Something else that'd feature would be an early TT. Now I would want a 225 Quattro. Now they have a 1.8 litre turbocharged petrol engine. And obviously as the name suggests, 225 horsepower. Quattro all wheel drive. I mean, look at that. It's a V-Reg, so that's a very early car that. I think they started, did they start on a T? I think they started on a T. So 99T. It's such a great design. Sadly, they're not making the TT as of next year, I believe. I go for a coupe over a convertible. I just think that will definitely look nice in this barn of mine. Yeah, it'd have to be a 225 because the 225 have got twin exhaust, so you've just got a much more symmetrical design. I think that's it for Audi. Nothing else really rocks me boat. Actually, I was getting ahead of myself there. What am I thinking of? I'd have to buy an early R8, a 4.2 litre V8 rather than a V10, and it would have to be the gated manual. I think I'd pick something in silver like that. Again, it's just a really clean, you might think silver's boring, but I like it in cars. It's just a really clean colour. Look at that. That is such a lot of car for 30, what is it, 37 grand or something? That, unfortunately, though, is the semi-auto. It'd have to be the gated manual. So, yeah, all right, that would definitely be there. I'm not sure when I'd use any of these cars. I'd just like to go and wander around my barn and have a look. Ah, I think I looked at this one. I think I've got this saved in my Autotrader garage. How good does that look? I've never actually driven an R8. I should try and get one on the channel, shouldn't I? 
especially in an early one like that. What else then? What else? What else? Right, you might want to go and pop the kettle on now while I talk about this next one because this won't be the most popular. We're heading over to Chrysler. Featuring in this barn of mine would be two cars. Firstly, a Crossfire. Look at that, that's an awful lot of car, isn't it, for two and a half grand? That's a 2005 54. Two and a half grand. I also love that colour. They're a rare sight now on the roads, those. That's a manual, I'd probably go with an automatic, to be honest. Underneath, basically, it's an old Mark 1 SLK. So you've got a 3.2 litre V6 from Mercedes. They're quite reliable. I had one for a while as my own car and didn't really get on with it. But in this barn, I think it'd be fine because I'd never use it. I just like to go and stare at it. I think I'd go with a coupe rather than convertible. But yeah, definitely. I know this is a different video topic, but definitely a future classic. And certainly worthy of a place in my barn. The next one, which you probably will completely disagree with me on, is a PT Cruiser. I don't know why, but I just like the PT Cruiser. I just think it's quite a cool car. So, I had one in that colour, actually. I just think it'd be a really good talking point. When I invite people down to this barn, they'd all point and laugh at my uh, PT Cruiser and then we could have a conversation about it. That one's called a Sunset Boulevard. I was behind one in traffic yesterday, actually, and it was called, and I'm sure this is, I'm sure nobody just stuck this badge on. It was called something like a Street Cruiser. Which sounds like a predatory sex offender, doesn't it? But no, I definitely have a PT Cruiser in the barn. Don't know why. Now then, Jaguar. There are all sorts of Jags I'd have in this barn. I'd have an old S-Type, because I like them. Probably an early Mark I. Probably a V8 as well. I'd also have an X-Type, which I know people criticise and say is a Mondeo, but that's not such a bad thing. It would have to be, in fact, I've got one of these. I need to finish my video with it. It's a three litre all wheel drive V6 petrol estate. So I'd have to, well, I might just keep that. One of those, that would feature. And also an XJR, an X308 XJR, like the red one that I had, but I really fancy a black one. It would have to be metallic black with a black interior. I just think they look really cool. I would also have an XK, but the later gen XK from 2007. Jeep, what I would really, oh, look at that. That's a thousand quid. It's cool, isn't it? Four litre petrol. Right, that wasn't on my list. What I would have though is an XJ series Cherokee with a four litre. So like mid nineties Cherokee. I just think they're really cool. And I bet, I bet you know, I bet there isn't one on Auto Trader. They've all been, oh, there's one. Five and a half grand. That's a four litre Orvis. Now I love that area of Cherokee. I just love how boxy it is. It's like, it's almost like an 80s car. And I had one of these recently that was donated to me or donated to a good cause. And they're tiny. When I was a kid, I mean, I was smaller then obviously, but I always would think that they were a big car. And then I got in this and it was the size of a Ford Focus. So yeah, Jeep Cherokee. It'd have to be the four litre six cylinder though, not the diesel because the diesel suffers with head caskets. I think that was an Italian motor. Uh, what else? This isn't tat necessarily, but I would have. In fact, I would love a Jensen Interceptor. Like that, in brown. That is just the coolest thing ever, isn't it? A 7.2 litre Chrysler V8, hand-built in the West Midlands. That's £80,000, though. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Now, I really would like to include a P38 Range Rover. So the P38 ran from 1994 until 2002. And it would have to be a Bordeaux edition. Let me see if I can find a Bordeaux. So the Bordeaux was featured in this, in this colour and it had little red accents here and also matching red carpets. Now this is a 2.5 diesel which I wouldn't want. If you've ever driven one, they're, oh, they're so slow, it's painful. You forget how bad they are until you drive one and then you think something's broken. They're that slow, you put it in drive and then you put your foot down and you think, oh wait a minute, have I actually put it in drive? And it turns out you have. It's almost like you've left it in park. They're so, so bad. So it'd have to be a V8, four liter or 4.6. I really fancy one of those. It's like an addiction, this, isn't it? Also in my barn would be my, my 2002 Range Rover that I've just bought, which I think I'll just keep because I really like it. I would also want an early Range Rover Sport. Now it'd have to be a V8, either the 4.4 or the 4.2. 
preferably a 4.2 in that orange colour. I think that was like a launch colour. In fact, let me see if I can see if we can find one. And see, there isn't one. There isn't one. See, there are only 28 petrols available. Now, let's go on price high to low. I don't want one with a silly body kit on because they look hideous. I'm not a drug dealer. There we go, £10,000, and that looks really original. No privacy glass, original wheels, original grill. It's not been smothered and suffocated in chrome. That looks really nice. So it's a 400 horsepower 4.2 supercharged V8. I'd have to make space in my barn for one of those, wouldn't I? I'd have to. Yep. Moving on then, onto Lexus. I would have an LS430. I've had many of those. I, would, I don't even need to show you a picture of an LS430. I've done several videos. Uh, what else would I have? I was going to see no. Mercedes. Oh. I'm daydreaming now, but you'd have to have an SLR, wouldn't you? It's 290 grand, but... Anyway, let's get down to earth, shall we? Oh, also, before we get back down to earth, let me just show you this. This is my dream classic. An old Pagoda Top SL from the 60s. That is the epitome of elegance, sophistication. But realistically, you need about 80 grand to get one. Ah, that's a right-hand drive car. That's unusual. A lot of them are California imports. Looks quite pretty in red, that. Yeah, that is my dream car. When I spent a few months um, at college in LA, there was a garage, a classic car dealer in West Hollywood. And on the corner, there would be a, a, a 1964 280 SL in dark blue. And I would drive past it every day and just think, one day. One day, what I really came here to show you was the old ML. Now, I've mentioned this in many videos. And you all think I'm mad for saying this, but I really fancy an early ML320 like a 98 or 99 car with the two-tone two -tone bumpers. They're really rare, so rare in fact, I don't even think we'll see one here on the uh, on Autotrader. I'd also have an ML63 just for good measure. I think what I'm gonna have to do then is type in, there we go, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It would have to be like that, which looks rubbish with small wheels and different color bumpers. I just think it looks really cool that. Look at that going through a Ford. God knows why I want one. I just think they're really cool. I'd probably try and look for an ML55 as well, like a facelift one, like an 0203. I also fancy as well an old 560 SEL. Now the SE, I think, you might correct me now, but I think the, the S-Class was only known as the S-Class since the 90s. Before that, it was known as the SE, or the SEL was the long wheelbase. So this is an SEL. So it's a 560, so it uses a 5.6 litre V8. That's a J, so 1992. That's really cool. £15,000, that, that's an import from, I think it said South Africa, so there shouldn't be any rust. There you go, South Africa. You really can't beat that late 80s, 90s era of Mercedes, they were all built like tanks. Uh, what else would I have? I think that's it for Mercedes. Like I say, I'm obsessed with the SL, I think I'd like one from every, every generation. Right, this one might be a bit unusual, and again, I don't think we'll be able to see, I don't think we'll be able to find one here on Autotrader. But what I really want, no, I can't find one, they're all the newer shape. I would want a late 90s Shogun like that, it's a Mitsubishi Shogun, but the three door with the V6 engine. It'd have to be a post-1997 model with those flared arches. Let me try and find one. So basically like that, that's an old Men and Motors review. Three litre V6, automatic, probably, I'd probably go for a diamond spec with leather. It's getting a bit weird this, isn't it? You weren't expecting it to take a turn like this. Uh, what now then? Porsche, right. Now, you're all gonna be expecting me to say 911 or something like that, aren't you? No, let me shock you. KN. What I really want is an early turbo. So something like a 2003 turbo, but it's got to be, oh, there you go. Probably something like that. So it's an 04. That is one of the best colors in my opinion. And it'd have to be a really nice example that isn't too heavily modified. And that looks very clean. Ideally though, I'd want it to be black with a tan interior. But I think I could work with blue and grey, to be fair. That, for its time, was just was mind-blowing. 450 horsepower, 4.5 litre V8. So I would definitely have to find room for an old turbo. 
I've been watching this one for about about six months now on AutoTrader. Just expecting them to drop the price suddenly and then I'll uh, go and do something stupid. So that's only done 70 odd thousand miles, which is why the price is a bit high. This one's been to Spain. It is your average Marbella car, that, isn't it? Just think, when I was growing up, that was a really, it still is, a really cool car. Let's take a quick detour to Rolls-Royce. What I really want is a silver shadow. I know they look like wedding cars, but Kate Moss has one and I think she knows what cool is. You couldn't have a white one because you would just look like you are in a wedding car. Something like that I just think is so cool. Again, I don't even want to use it. I just want to sit in it and play around with it. They're not even that expensive, but I think what would panic me about that is you need to, you need to buy a decent one. Uh, and I think, I don't know anything about these, but I've heard it needs to be a Shadow 2 rather than a Shadow 1. I don't know why. I'm guessing the later ones were just a bit more better built, perhaps. So yeah, I would definitely have one of those. I just think they're really cool. I'd have an old Saab 9.3 convertible as well. I'd want like a late 90s car. Let's have a look. I always quite like that colour as well. It'd have to be a late 90s, early 2000s. See, that's a 2002. Such a lot of car, isn't it, for 1500 quid. Two litre turbo. That's really cool. So yeah, I'd have one of those as well. Now this next one might surprise you, although if you've watched all this video to this point, nothing will surprise you anymore. I'd have a Mark 1 XC90. Now I know I don't like these, I've done several videos with them. And I don't like them at all, but I would have one with the V8 engine in it. Now they do one with a 4.4 litre Yamaha V8, which is basically an outboard engine. Oh, that's only 2995. It's done 200,000 miles, but I would just, I'd have one of those. I don't really know why, just as a piece of history, I think. I just think that's really cool. The car isn't cool, but the fact it's got that engine makes it cool. I don't make these rules up. Right, well, I think we're at the end of the list here. Uh, ah, actually, there's one that I've forgotten. Aston Martin. I couldn't do a list like this and not include. Let's have a look, shall we? Now, I'd really want a, a newer shaped Vanquish or a Virage, but I think I'd settle for something like a DB9. So let's look at this one. This one's £24,000. It's in that colour that I'd, well, I think they've got to be that colour. Such a beautiful car. So yeah, I would definitely have one of those just to go and stare at. Oh, look at that. They've always got weird coloured interiors as well. It's either blue or oxblood like that. Which I just think adds to the drama of it. There's actually one more car here that I've forgotten about. So I'd want, I don't know why I'd want one of these, but I think I'd just have to have one. They did a rare limited edition model called the North Face. Now it's a Ford Explorer from the 90s. It's just such a 90s SUV, that, isn't it? But yeah, I'd probably try and pick a, a North Face edition. Proper American truck, isn't it? Well, I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers, guys. See you next time. <laughs>